November 2010 saw over 50,000 protesters take to the streets of central London. The demonstration was largely student-led, protesting the planned cuts to further education and the increase on tuition fee cap at universities. Student groups said that the intended cuts were excessive and broke campaign promises made by politicians. In particular, the promises of the Liberal Democrat leader Nick Clegg. Prior to the general election in May, Nick Clegg pledged that he would vote against any proposed increase in the tuition fees, if elected. Following the election and resulting hung parliament, he went back on his pledge, supporting the increased tuition fee cap to £9,000, causing outrage across the country and losing his credibility. Despite the protests, the changes went ahead, leaving potential students and universities alike questioning their future. Over the course of this programme, I will be exploring how the changes have affected students and universities and what the future could have in store for them. Students were arguably the hardest hit by the rise in tuition fees, and 2012 saw the first group of students having to deal with the increase. I visited the University of Northampton, where I spoke with Casey Goodman about how the rise in fees have affected her. Yeah, that was the only thing that was putting me off going to university. And it wasn't just me, it was everyone in my year. We was all hit by it, obviously. You know, Nick Clegg made a promise that he chose not to keep. And uh, as much as that lovely, auto-tuned apology on YouTube gets stuck in your head and whatnot, it's, uh, it's not enough. So it is disappointing and um, it's difficult. It is difficult. I mean, obviously here at York Northampton, it's only £8,500 instead of nine. Yeah. But it's still, you know, it's still almost triple what we could have paid. And it's just, it, it's hit us very hard. Because even with our parents as well, the parents are saying, you know, this is a lot of money that you've got to invest in. And it's a lot of money that's going to hit you later on in life. A lot of my friends um, went down the apprenticeship route instead. And, um, and that's purely as a result of the high fees. And some of them are looking at doing the Open University as well, which I think is slightly cheaper. But I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but I think that's slightly cheaper. Um, and that's all because of the fees. The fact that some potential students aren't coming to university because of the rise in fees is something that universities need to be worried about. Although applicant numbers are sustaining for the moment, it may not always be the case. At the heart of university is a student's union. The SU acts on behalf of students and was largely involved in organising the protests. I spoke to Ben Wesson about why the SU opposed the rise in fees and what worries the SU has about the future. Students from across the UK have obviously been involved in a number of protests against rising tuition fees and one of the main reasons for that is simply because um, it prevents some of the brightest and best students from getting onto our campuses and obviously we've been uh, fighting against the government and trying to get our points across and telling them not to increase tuition fees um, because although they claim that you, know, you might not have to pay that money back for a good number of years that's still a debt that's looming over students heads and graduates heads um, once they've finished their courses and it's uh, a big worry to people that might otherwise consider coming to university in the first place so um, that's that's the ultimate reason we're opposed to it um, the idea is that many of the politicians that have actually made this decision went through a fully funded university education themselves and how can they say that it's fair that students today are having to pay you know enormous amounts of money nine thousand pounds is a lot of money um, to pay f to pay for a university education we agree that you know universities need to provide uh, an excellent quality of service for students um, through their courses um, and w we know that that costs money but uh, the government's co cut a lot of funding, its funding, to universities um, and if that funding had been sustained there would be no reason for a rise in tuition fees. There's obviously that real concern that these, the hiking fees will put people off coming to university in general and if that is the case um, then institutions have got, got to worry about it. I mean all of the figures are showing that applications are, are sustaining but I suspect that's because of the, the dire job market um, at the moment. People can't get work so they're looking to go back into education, they're still having to pay for that, it's still very expensive. Um, so yeah, you're, you're completely right, um, it would be a worry if um, student numbers diminish substantially, um, things like students unions and the university campuses might just disappear.
and that's going to have um, a disastrous effect on the UK economy because what you won't have is well-rounded graduates in the in the market um, you know stimulating growth um, so it could be a real concern for the whole country to be honest if there is any uh, further increases in fees I certainly um, would be against that it is clear that the SU's main concern is about the students being put off university and what it could mean if they stop going, not just for the future of universities but for the economy as well. A big concern is that students from a lower income background are going to miss the opportunity to go to university because the cost is simply too high. I spoke to Paul Middleton about these concerns and the effects that it could have on the future of universities. That is my biggest fear because I think that people who are already, you know, um, living hand to mouth to put it a better way you know, if, you, if you've got an income coming in and you're spending it every week or every month just to live then taking on more yet more debt is quite a challenge for those people and I think it is going to impact the the working class people and sub working class people I think you're going to see a polarization and I think that you're going to see students from middle class uh, families continuing to go to university pretty much unaffected, perhaps even increasing actually because you know, everybody understands that a university education does improve your chances in life. But sadly I think what you're going to see as um, the population of working class and sub-working class get in yet more debt, and they will if the economy doesn't improve, then they'll be adverse to sending their sons or daughters to university. So I think that the way things are at the moment, unless the economy improves, it's almost inevitable that will be a polarisation within those sectors of our society. So you don't think there's any danger that, say, um, certain university departments will close down or indeed actual universities having to close? I don't think that'll happen because I think the preferred option, well, I think the government will steer them towards mergers. Um, I don't think they will want to see universities closing down. But when you're talking about departments, there's an interesting one, um, because obviously there's a big emphasis at the moment on the survival of courses related to employability. So in other words, yeah. if your students have got a really good chance of finding employment, then there is a good chance that, that those areas will survive. But when it's less obvious, so if you take, I don't know, history or something like that, or English, you know, where it's less obvious, um, the arts and humanities area, there will be pressure put on those courses um, uh, to demonstrate good employment rates. And if they can't do that, they may be at risk. I think that's the mechanisms that they will apply. The, the good thing for us, of course, as you well know, is that we're number one for employability. Yes. Yeah. So hopefully we'll, we'll, you know, we'll be in a good position in, in that respect. OK, so maybe not closing, but um, do you think investors will begin to struggle as well? Um, I think they, they will have to restructure and redesign their work the way they work. I don't think it's going to be, well, I know it's not going to be the same way that it has been for the last 20 years. I think what you're going to see in the next five years is the, the volume of change that has occurred in the last 20 years compacted into five years. That will give you an idea of how much right. change got to occur. But, you know, on another level, Richard, I, I think change does need to occur. Yeah. You know, I think we could do things better. I think we could do things in a more effective way that's focused on the student experience. Because I think sometimes we've lost sight of that. So I think we can improve our performance. And I'm not just talking about this university, I'm talking about sector-wide. Would you say this is actually um, an opportunity more than something bad that's happened? Well, I know it's a cliche, but yeah, I do. Uh, and it is a cliche, but I think there are a lot of opportunities out there to change the way that we think and the way that we work and the way that there's type of services that we offer to students. And I think, um, you know, in the past 20 years, we could have been more effective with that, you know, invested our money in perhaps different ways that would have helped students rather than um, helping to build a state where it hasn't been necessary. And, I, and again, when I'm talking like this, I'm talking about the sector rather than just the university. Yeah. The future of university may not be as bad as some first thought. The real concern is for the students. Whilst it is clear that university will be available for them, it remains to be seen if it will be a realistic investment for everyone.